Well, good morning from a not quite so sunny Spain this morning, but uh, we hope you're good and we are going to go on a walk this morning. Where are we going to go to? We're going to go to El Hondo or El Fondo, depending how you want to pronounce it. Well, why is it called El Hondo or El Fondo? Because one's Valencian and one's Spanish. All right, so a bit like our village then, La Foya and La Foya. La Foya. Right, yes, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a bird reserve, uh, a, a natural park um, with areas of conservation. Uh, there's plenty to walk around, so we'll need to get a move on to fit it all in, in one day. And we hope you're going to join us on the journey. And I've made a picnic for us Oh, today. you made a picnic? Okay. A full picnic. We have so. a full picnic as well, so that's something to look forward to, isn't it? Okay, let's go. Okay. I was born one morning, rain come pouring down. I heard my mama say, Oh, my papa, let's call him John Henry Brown. Walk on, boy. Yeah. Walk on, boy. Walk on down the road. Ain't no one in this wide world gonna help, help you, you carry, carry your load. Boat. Walk on, boy. So we're travelling west of Loyer now um, into an area of land that used to be known as the Lagoon of Elche because it was entirely underwater and um, El Hondo that we're going to uh, is an attempt to reclaim what nature originally intended really. So we're just approaching the entrance to El Hondo now, where we go down the worst road. No, it's not that one, it's the next one. We go down the worst road in the world with cobbles and potholes and all sorts of things. But we don't, um, it's been tarmacked. Um, <laughs> okay, forget that. Um, we have a tarmac road, that's right. Oh, that's good, isn't it? That saves the car. Over lockdown, they've re the road. Well, I yeah, I suppose people are catching up on the jobs that they can do. Because it was closed for a little bit, wasn't it? Yes. Um, back to the car park as, as per usual, but it's still it's, that's that's a brilliant improvement actually. That's it great. Is, yes. I think we'll need the mosquito spray today. Yes, I think I'm just realising that. Yeah, there's quite a few of them around. It's because there's water. Yeah, it's true. I suppose that's the advantage of the mask as well, isn't it? You've already <laughs> you've already got some covering. I think I need some as well, don't I really? Yes. But, ugh, I don't like it on my face. So we're um, looking at the map. Deciding which route we're going to go on. How far we want to walk today. But the red route is closed. Yeah, it is indeed. Um, I expect the visitor centre's open. Shall we go and see? Yes, see which route they recommend. They've done a good job here, actually, haven't they, in kitting it all out? Yes, planted lots of trees and, yet again, palm trees. But it's a nice, welcoming entrance. And a statue with a bird attached to it. <laughs> well, that would be appropriate, wouldn't it, really? Yeah. Well, I could have. Keep away from him, he's got a cough. <laughs> <laughs> and a boardwalk, which is nicer to walk on than the hard, hard line, is actually, actually, isn't it? Sorry. A bit breezier today. Yeah, it is a little bit. Well, there you go. The visitor centre is maximum six persons at the moment. Um, I noticed that instead of the maps for visitor centre now they just have a little QR code that you uh, you click onto to get the map and then expect you to carry it around on your on mobile your phone. phone to save to save um, the paper. paper. Um, also they put some of that in from Covid so that they're not handing out 
papers that people have touched. Yeah, that's a good point, actually, isn't it? Something I find it quite interesting looking at um, the information here because I can't say that I know a great deal about conservation, even though I want to know more about it, about how important it is for the different nutrients that are found in wetlands. I didn't realise wetlands were so important. No, well, as, as I was saying before, that it used to be a lagoon and then they decided to um, they decided to drain it to to make um, farmland, um, but then they've realised that uh, wetlands absorb floods and um, help fight climate change. And here it says they store large quantities of carbon. Yeah. In fighting climate change, and they act as sponges and absorb and maintain water. Yeah, so if you take them away then you're obviously um, increasing the climate change and the global warming, aren't you? Aren't they really? Yes, when I, I, I think of the word wetlands I go back to my failed geography O-levels <laughs> <laughs> we used to discuss the wetlands in different countries. And this section here is all about La Certeta, La Certeta, La Certeta Padilla the marbled duck or marbled tail and as I said I read in a news article only last week that they'd reintroduced breeding pairs and because um, it's virtually extinct apparently it lives 10 years no it doesn't I have totally misread the Spanish it lays okay. 10 eggs a year <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't live 10 years okay it's all in Spanish but I got there Beautiful pictures taken by a professional photographer, including a kingfisher. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I mean there are some I recognise, like the old uh, the old coot. Uh, see quite a lot of, and, uh, and that's another picture of your marbled teal. Oh, teal. Um, so we'll have to look out for him today. I'd love to see a kingfisher. I have never seen a kingfisher. Yeah, I've only seen one or two. You'll probably, well, we will see flamingos. Yes, we see lots of flamingos um, here. And we will see, although it may not be able to capture on film because I don't always get them, we will see the, the herons as well. And, uh, and the black wing stilts. Oh, yes, and the that I thought were baby flamingos. <laughs> Did you really? Yes. Okay. And I realised that they didn't have the same legs or the same colours, but they had long legs like flamingos. What sort of bird is this one then? It doesn't... Yes. <laughs> why, why is that there? I don't know, because they can see it here, I suppose. The tiger <laughs> moth, plain tiger butterfly. Uh, this is what I was saying about the Lagoon Revelche, because once upon a time, this was all water, and then it's saying in Roman times, it was less water. There was still a huge lagoon, though. I mean, basically, Elche is just at the top of that, so it was on the top of the lake, really. Yeah. And then the 17th century, there's still a massive amount of stuff there. Um, but actually, well, actually, no, actually, the bit that El Hondo has been reduced by significantly by the yes, 17th has, century. Yes, yes. And so when you look at today, there are just three. Um, there's the big section that actually is is more wet than it was before, and all of these. If you look at all the red dot towns, they all couldn't have been built in historic days because all of that region was the water underwater. Yes. So that that's how it used to look. Yes. And that's how it looks now, but that's all in effect. It's partially evolution and history, but it's partially man made as well. Mm -hmm. It's the best of both worlds because it's, it's developing the wetlands, but it's also using the agricultural water from this area to feed the, the thriving agricultural industry we've got all around the area. 
Um, interesting. Very interesting. Well, mallard, we've, yes, we feel happy with mallards. Red crested pochard. 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 Northern shoveler I've heard of. Uh, quite a few of our people we know are northern shovelers, aren't they, when they have the dinner? <laughs> Common teal. Pintail. Tufted duck. Now he's a bit more easily recognised. Yeah, he is a bit. Gadwell. Eurasian widgeon. I mean, it is as a conservation centre, it is a centre for school parties as well. So now there's a couple of school trips going on here. Yeah, there is today. So life at school in Spain is continued after the first lockdown when they reopened the first time. The life for school has continued as normal. Children have always been back in school. Yeah, that's true actually. They've taken a different approach to the UK. They used to have to have all windows open and all children over the age of five are masked. So that is all primary and secondary school children have to wear masks at school all day. And they've adapted to it very well. It's probably easy having the windows open all day in Spain than it is in the UK to be fair, isn't it? But yes, it probably is. There's a couple of hides along the roof, isn't there? So shall we go to one of those? Yes, definitely. Have some mindful moments overlooking the water. I never thought of myself as a, a twitcher, is that the right word? It is the right word. I, I don't sit still long enough in quiet normally. Well, so maybe this is a good it, idea. No, but doesn't that mean you are a twitcher? Oh, okay, yes, possibly. <laughs> Twitchy, yes. One of my dear and good friends from many, many years ago um, taught me a lot about bird watching because he worked for the RSPB for many, many years and, and he was able to help me understand the difference between bird watching and conservation really. I, re I thought it was a bit like train spotting where you, you just tigged birds and said that you'd got them but actually it's a lot more than that. And the RSPB now do an absolutely amazing job in looking after green spaces and not just bird environments, but environments that um, are conservationally good for everybody. It's, um, it's remarkable as well that um, everybody wins by trying to put it back into its natural state because there's so much irrigation now, irrigation water that's available that comes from the wetlands that they've flooded here. Yes, it means that our area is a vegetable basket. It is a vegetable basket. As the so, seasons change, we've watched them grow all sorts. Yeah. And now they're just beginning to get to the point of planting the, the, the harvest in the artichokes and the green beans, and then they start to plant the peppers and the tomatoes as it gets warmer. Yeah. And the cucumbers. I thought it would be a lot drier, it's quite amazed me, as we've had 51 days without rain. Yeah, although the weather would suggest that in the next two or three days... We may get a we lot may, more. We may get, get a little bit more at least. It doesn't bode well for the summer though if we have had no rain because there will be water shortages of the yeah, main drinking water. possible. And they ration the agricultural water as well, don't they? Sometimes they reduce it to so, so many days a week. Or so many hours on certain days. Or so you many get, hours on You so get a, days, yeah. a time slot, yes. We use agricultural water for our garden all on timers to save us watering all the plants apart from the pots.
inside the um, hide now and there's a notice on the board about the marbled teal um, basically asking for help if you ever find the numbers because they're the, the pairs that they've released and Julie's just enjoying herself looking out of the, the square window do you have a smile for the camera <laughs> you can't see <laughs> did that without moving your lips yes I'm enjoying the piece well, that's good God really is amazing when you look out I can see the mountains behind hear the bird song and the duck song still a bird song creation really is something else yeah looking out here just makes me think about the lessons in Lent that I've learnt I've been thinking about them learning to slow down maybe not something I'm good at no, it isn't really something you're good at, is it? Actually, <laughs> to be honest, you keep yourself pretty busy. Yeah, but I'm trying now to take time out and sit and think and be. Sometimes in the garden, looking at flowers. I'm enjoying the garden at the moment, but just the walks are really showing me back to creation, just God's beauty and just the, the peace. I can find within it if I look for it, and if I take the time to listen for it. Listening for peace sounds a bit weird, but actually you can listen for peace, and I'm enjoying doing that. Is that something that you have to deliberately choose to do then, do you think? For me personally, definitely. I choose to do it on the beach. I like to go in somewhere on my own sometimes and just sit on the beach and stare at the waves so I choose to do it then but I don't choose to do it at home so much and I think I need to find ways of doing it not just because it's Lent. It's almost like having a mini retreat just in your everyday life isn't it really I suppose? Yes which and is, we should. Which is slightly easier when you've got beautiful views and restful um, moments. Um, but it's not always that simple in the busy day, is it? No, but I'm sure all of us could find the space if we became determined to schedule it in. Mm. So that's my lesson so far, lessons in Lent. this hide then and we'll uh, on our walk and we'll go on to the next one well we're at a bit of a crossroads here but uh, what we'll do is because there's a green route that we want to go on and then there's the another hide that we can go and look at a different piece of water so let's go to the hide first okay well I'm hoping as soon as we walk down to this hide that we'll see some of the flamingos because they're often on this particular piece of water okay so what can you see through this window then? Oh, flamingos. They're amazing. We're so close. Only a few metres. I think four, but you think 25. So there's the pink ones and then there's the ones that are different coloured, aren't they? There's ones more black, but apparently they're, they're younger and it takes up to three years before they become pink. Right. And it is to do with their diet of shrimp. And they only okay. lay one egg a year. Okay. So well, they're so clever. Put their heads in the water and eating. Yeah. You can actually, I mean, 
we've got two cameras here, so you can see the flamingos, but you can also see the islands beyond as well. Yes. And uh, there's actually they're absolutely teeming with bird life that we can't really see. But of course, El Hondo's a lot bigger than just the bits that you can walk to, because uh, a lot of it is uh, laid out, obviously, for conservation. Yes, so that you can't go to those areas. You yeah, can't go to so breeding grounds and things, because they're where they want to be disturbed. Yeah. But flamingos seem happy around people, really, when you think how many are on the N332 going into Alicante. There are thousands against the road, the main road. Yeah. I wonder if my daughter, who had her birthday yesterday, would appreciate me telling the world that she used to call them Maflingos when she was a little girl. Probably not. Well, I hadn't realised, stupidly so, that it's flamenco in Spanish and that flamenco is flamingo. Yes, because of the posture of the dance. Yes, I, I have not Yeah, and the and the um, costumes they wear are all elaborate and ruffled and feathers and. Yeah, it was so ruffles. elegant and leggy that they called it flamenco. Flamenco, yeah. They named the uh, dance after me once when somebody saw me dancing. What bad dad dancing? No, they called it hippopotamus. <laughs> so we starting up the green route now and actually this is getting further away from the visitor center so it's actually quieter in one thing nothing it wasn't quiet before but yeah so for quite some time the the scenery doesn't really change because we've got grasses on both sides and the water the water areas are actually over the grasses with a bit more privacy to them so the view doesn't change for a bit so um, because the view doesn't change for a bit I think um, I'm tempted to put our cameras away and stop carrying the things and make the make enjoy the distance the enjoy the walk and make the distance that we need to in the meantime we'll play a piece of music. So that's on the way back from the, the green route then. We're walking here close to the irrigation release system, aren't we? Is that what yes, it is? Yes, yes, um, yes. Yes, they open the sluice gates. That, that's, uh, we can probably see it from both and behind us. That they open sluice gates behind there. Though. Yes, and then it, floats, it flows into the, into the wetlands. Yeah, and it really is win-win that um, humanity returns the land as close as it can to how nature intends it and humanity benefits as well yes. really. So this is our third walk through Lent. It doesn't directly relate to Lent in one sense but it does because because the vulnerability that you have in recognizing the helplessness of the human situation. Um, but I suppose it works both ways because you could actually give up all hope and just not try but it's that a little bit like that old chestnut story of the the person who went down the child who went down on the beach mm. and there's all the starfish washed up they're all dying there's the child through one back and 
the helpful parent said something like that's not going to make a difference and the child says well it's going to for this one yes and I suppose that's a little bit how I feel about the green issue and that you can't always tackle the, the macro situation that's, that's that that's the purpose of organizations such as the RSPB that we talked about before and green summits and governments and yes. people who make the real decisions so there's a whole collection of agitators and and workers and policy makers and if we work together and listen to David Attenborough Now this is easy walking, this, there's a bit, a lot of this was burnt down in the fire. Yeah. The last time I came here, which is a couple of years ago, before the fire, there was no water here at all. It, had, it was summer and it had yeah. dried up a lot. So this was over sort of, just a bit more marshy, whereas actually this is quite a lake at the moment. You asked me what I learnt in Lent, I think one of the other things I've learnt is that you and I can't walk in a straight line because we keep bouncing into each other. <laughs> <laughs> Lateral sideways movement. Well, we both don't walk well. No. We lurch. <laughs> well, these are all black ducks. <laughs> I think when we get to the end, I will look and see what their name is. But there's lots of them, black ones. I think, you'll find, I think you'll find the coots. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. But you can call them black ducks if you want. <laughs> well, they are black ducks. Um, they probably aren't. What, they aren't black and they aren't ducks? They aren't ducks, I don't think. Well, aren't they? No. Oh. They look like ducks. Not that I'm an expert. I better get myself up, sat down then. Otherwise, I'll start without you. <laughs> I'm hungry now it's, after all that walking. It's nice, it's nice to see you brought a nice simple picnic for two of them. I bought a Spanish tapas <laughs> dinner lunch for two. I'm very impressed. Can you tell me what's in it then? We have serrano ham, mm -hmm. chorizo, mm -hmm. empanadas. Mm -hmm which are um, filled with what's called a vegetable pisto, mm -hmm. which is a vegetable mix, mm -hmm. manchego cheese, tomatoes, mm -hmm. olives stuffed with anchovies, mm -hmm. carrots for the hummus, grapes, crisps, bread, and then the date and walnut cake with a couple of chocolate brownies too, for our energy. That's very good. You have a beer and I have one. Well, I have a, a zero a zero percent alcohol beer uh, a zero percent alcohol beer i have a small glass of wine which is a bit of a treat really um you have a small glass of wine okay i have a small glass of wine so que aproveche si gracias I've even brought glasses for us, you see. Don't yeah, I know, I spotted that. Oh, it's not so small, is it? Pardon? I said it's not such a small glass. <laughs> no, it's not, is it? Beer is really nice, actually, whether or not it's got any alcohol in it or not. I must get back to drinking beer at some stage. Then I can give it up for Lent next year. <laughs> I suppose seeing as have, we've had no scripture references this week, you thought we'd replicate the feeding of the 5,000 then? It was ever thus with me. But without loaves of... there's no fish or loaves. 
There's anchovies in the grapes. WWJD, what would Jesus do? <laughs> <laughs>